might know your mind And I'll bring you hope When hope is hard to find And I'll bring a song of love And a rose in the winter time This is a new day. This is a new day full of sound, light, expectation, and joy. This day has been waiting for you. This day has been waiting especially for you, to embrace you, to guide you. This day has been waiting with open arms just for you. This is the day that we have been given. Let us not waste it. Come now and let us worship together. Good morning. We are so happy you can be with us today, whether it is on Facebook, Zoom, or maybe even later on on YouTube, or right here in person. What a joy it is to be together. There are a couple of announcements to share with you today. Time is running out to sign up for the Heart to Heart Circles. This is our small group ministry program that will begin in January. We are offering different times and days, which include in-person and online options to try to accommodate your schedules. So go have a look at uuyo.org and click on the link to sign up. Also, there will not be a chalice chapel for kids today. Children are invited to remain in the service with us so that we may share our joys with one another. We believe that faith is a journey we take together. Religious education takes a lifetime. It happens both beyond our congregation walls and in person. We support one another as individuals, families, and communities in an ongoing search for truth and meaning. We strive to guide one another, all ages among us, in religious questioning, personal change, and discovering ways to better live in faith. And so we come to love generously, seek truth, and serve the world. We come today to explore the theme of joy. We come to hear stories and to sing with one another the songs in our hearts. And so we come together as a community with minds that are open and hearts that are ready to receive. Every day brings struggle. Every day brings joy. Every day brings us the opportunity to ease the struggle of another, to be the joy in another's life. May this flame remind us to carry our light to each other and to the world.
If You're Happy and You Know It by James Warhola. Story told by Mackenzie. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, scratch your fur. If you're happy and you know it, flap your wings. If you're happy and you know it, laugh out loud. If you're happy and you know it, beat your chest. If you're happy and you know, jump up high. Time to go, kids. <laughs> Join me in the reading of our covenant. Love is the doctrine of this church, and, this, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth and love, and to help one another. Each month we give 100% of our non-designated money to an organization that supports transformation in our community, which is the heart of our mission. UUYO Give away the plate recipient of the month of December is DRUM, a Unitarian Universalist People of Color ministry, an anti-racist collective bringing lay and religious professionals together to overcome racism through resistance and transform Unitarian Universalism through our multicultural experiences. DRUM is an all-volunteer ministry, a growing membership of UU People of Color from every district and region. Find out more at uua.org. Please place your donation in the baskets at the end of the service or donate online. There is a candle in every soul some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes us whole. So carry your candle, run to the darkness seek out the helpless confused and torn and hold out your candle for all to see take your candle and go light your world take your candle Light your world. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle. Some other way. See now your sister She's been robbed and lied to Still holds a candle Without a flame So carry your candle Run to the darkness Seek out the lonely 
tired and worn Hold out your candle for all to see Take your candle and go light your world The wellspring of decency is loving this life in which people die, people suffer, there are limits, and we make mistakes. The wellspring, then, of moral action is not utopia, not counterfactual vision, They're not a declaration that the world could and should be otherwise. Rather, it is a deep affirmation of the joy, witness, and blessing that the world is. The ground of challenging exploitation, injustice, and oppression is not a vision of how the world could be or will be in the future reign of God or after a resolution. The ground of challenging injustice is gratitude, the heartfelt desire to honor the world of that which is to cherish, to celebrate, to delight in many gifts and the joy of life. So those of you who are with us in person, you will find in front of you, in the pew, in the back of the pew in front of you, a card. Now you're only allowed to use one card. Okay, so on this card I want you to write something that brings you joy. Now I want you to think for a few moments about that because you are only allowed to write one. After you finish writing, bring your card up and place it in this basket that's on top of the piano. Those of you at home, please write your joy in the chat. These will be saved for a special display along with the ones shared here later next month. So as we do this ritual, we're going to have some music playing. Thank you.
My family brings me joy. Smiles and laughter. Sharing brings me joy. My beautiful girls. My seven-year-old daughter. Family and friends. Having the awareness to pause in a moment, any moment, to know how truly blessed I am, to let gratitude warm over and through me. Finding love again after losing a spouse. My extended family. So later on next month, you should see all your joys displayed somewhere in the sanctuary, along with those that were written online in the chat. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. The purpose of life is not to be happy, said Ralph Waldo Emerson. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and live well. There is no question that we all would like to be happy but sometimes our happiness can be replaced by other emotions such as anger and sadness. I believe that joy is more than an emotion. It is deeper and comes from a place within us. Traditionally, this is the season of joy and joy can have different meanings for each of us. Joy is also an uncommon religious value. In Judaism, its central role rests on the insight that God's presence does not make itself felt in a state of sadness or indifference or lightheartedness or distractedness, but rather in the joy that comes from fulfilling the mitzvah. And for those of you who might not know what a mitzvah is, the meaning of the Hebrew word mitzvah is commandment, but the generally accepted sense is that, a, that of a good deed. The emphasis is on deeds, not on positive thoughts or wishes, but on conscious acts of empathy and kindness. Such joy, I believe, results only when our action no longer comes from a sense of obligation, but from an inner personal desire. When I gave my children chores when they were young, I often reminded them that doing the chores correctly meant doing them with a happy heart. This was something that I had read in the Bible in Galatians. The Apostle Paul, echoing the words of Jesus, wrote, we are to serve one another from a heart of love. So, as you serve others and serve them, if you love others and serve them, the amazing truth is that you will actually be blessed and filled with joy. There's also a Chinese saying that goes, if you want happiness for an hour, Take a nap. I take a lot of naps. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. I really do a lot of fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. That hasn't happened to me yet. If you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody. Knowing just how to serve others can be confusing.
some things I learned about serving. Do not tell those in need what you are going to do for them. Ask them what they need. I heard a story once about a remote village where a hurricane had completely devastated its inhabitants. When asked why they had sent a volunteer organization away, they explained that the organization leaders wanted to give them food and clothing. They never asked what was needed. What we needed was help and materials to rebuild the fences that, had, that we used to have around the village. We have plenty of food and clothing, but the animals keep coming and eating all of our crops. And after they tell you what they need, if it is not what you were expecting, if you are able to, do it anyway. When my friend's daughter was dying in the ICU in Tucson a few years back, my friend was consumed with making medical decisions and talking with doctors and nurses about medication, treatments, and possible organ donation. I thought with my previous experience I could help her with these decisions, but when I asked what I could do, she expressed her overwhelming concern for her adult disabled son who was at home on his own and she asked me if I could just go be with him so she did not have to worry about him. And of course, that is what I did. Listen to those you wish to help. Listen to their stories. Let them speak of their grief. Ask them about their hopes. It's not about me. It's not about my problems or what I have gone through. When we serve, we look outside of ourselves beyond our own problems, and seek to bring value to others. Do what you love, then use it to help others. 
Life has never been easy for me. It was a difficult childhood, and as an adult, I have always struggled with poor health, financial issues as a single mom, and sometimes what others might call bad luck. But all my life, whenever I was able, I helped others. I happily helped my uncle who had a stroke, and for a couple of years, I helped him and my aunt. I invited April, a sick congregant who was terminally ill with cancer, to live with my family and was her caregiver until the time of her passing. But my favorite place to serve is within this wonderful faith. Unitarian Universalism has always allowed me to grow in the art of joy for more than 20 years now. I love art, I love literature and learning, and I have found a place where I can share what I love every day. In the book of John, we learn that during the Last Supper, Jesus got up from the table, wrapped himself with a towel, and washed the disciples' dusty, dirty feet. He then went on to teach his disciples that they must follow his lead and serve each other. He promised that those who served others would be blessed. Much like Jesus taught his disciples to serve others, I get to teach children the importance of compassion and caring for others. This is my joy. By no means are we Unitarian Universalists perfect. We often fail as much as we succeed. Yet even when we have broken our vows a thousand times, we return to this essential work of justice and liberation for all. We do the work best when we remember what church is and what it is not. Church is not a place to hide. It is not the place to get away from the world. It is not a place where we get to pretend that the lives we live and our particular situations are not terribly complex, often confusing, and sometimes depressing. Church is the place where we stand with one another look the world in the eye, attempt to see clearly, and gather strength to face what we see with courage and, yes, with joy. Yeah. Uh... 
A Prayer Among Friends by John Daniel. Among other wonders of our lives, we are alive with one another. We live here in the light of this unlucky, unlikely world that isn't ours for long. May we spend generously the time we are given. May we enact our responsibilities as thoroughly as we enjoy our pleasures. May we seek with clarity. May we seek a vision that serves all beings. May we honor the mystery surpassing our sight. And may we hold in our hands the gift of good work and bear it forth whole as we were born forth by a power we praise to this one earth this homeland of all we love. Join me in a moment of silence. As we extinguish this flame, let us remember the spark, as is the joy we shared here today. May we take this spark with us wherever we go and bring joy to a hurting world. Do not live too far in the past or the future. Live now. In each moment, expect a miracle. Ten kinds of birds at the feeder and the tracks of a fox in the snow. Pick up a magnifying glass and scrutinize the crocus. See the pollen at the center of the daffodil. Life's dust, death-defying life. Be astonished at the flower, arrested by its beauty. Run naked through the garden early in the morning and hope the wild geese fly by. Get silly and laugh loudly with your grandchildren or your grandparents. Refuse to leave the dead behind, but bring their memory to all your chores and games and corners of quiet, warm tears. Know always that joy and sorrow are woven together. One cannot be without the other. If you love, know that sometimes your love will bring you tears. If you grieve, know it is because at some time you were willing to love. Do not be afraid to die today, but expect life. Amen. Our little world lost Desmond Tutu. If you haven't heard that, our little world is just a little darker today. But as I sing this last song, which is one of the great African uh, spirituals, this little light of mine, I would ask that you would keep your thoughts on this great man and this wonderful light. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go. Oh, I'm gonna let it shine. 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 Oh, I'm gonna